Lord, he is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He is holy and just. By his power we trust. The Lord, He is faithful and true. By His mercy, He proves He is love. Great are You, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are You, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are You, Lord. I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice. for this beautiful, beautiful weather that we're having. Oh, what a gift from God. Absolutely. Do we have any announcements anyone needs to make? Yes. I just want to ask if what we need for the school kids still are the black and blue ballpoint pens, the notebooks, and the blunt point scissors. We have enough of the other things now. Thank you. Okay, so you know what to get when you go shopping. <laughs> All right, any other announcements? Let us, yes, one more. Say, um, can a cleanup start Labor Day weekend? So we'll be starting back at that on Sunday the 5th. Okay, Sunday the 5th. Thank you. Anything else? Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you are able, please rise. <coughs> hear God's love. We hear God's love. God's love. Holy God, open our ears to hear and our hearts be transformed by our Lord's words and actions of love to and for the world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the word of life and life, and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, 
In Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is verses 1 and 4 of Before You, Lord, We Bow, number 893, Masks Are Required When We Sing. that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. On these yellow sheets, I hope I'm making uh, an overdue of something that's not necessary, but for each reading each Sunday, there is a uh, set of words, for example, on this one, it says that wisdom is portrayed as a woman and so on. Be sure you read those. And also, I think this ties into what we have at the very beginning of our uh, weekly stapled together things telling us about today's readings. The first reading is recorded in the books, uh, book of Proverbs, ch uh, chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn the seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls she calls from the highest places in the town, you that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. So you see they had advertising going on in that day already. The second reading is uh, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, 
but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to the God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the readings for this day. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our very first verse today is the last verse from last week's gospel text. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This immediately thinks of our weekly celebration of Holy Communion here at the table. We are now ending our four-week session of Gospel of John here, where Jesus is specifically talking about bread and the life that this bread from God gives us all. These words from Jesus are spoken to the folks who are already questioning him as to how he can possibly say that he is the one who came down from heaven. And these words today just make the arguments even more confusing. And then Jesus makes things worse when he adds his blood to his verse, or his flesh in verse 55. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. They are to eat and drink the flesh and blood of this man? 
Ew! <laughs> we have to remember that the folks who are arguing here with Jesus have not yet experienced what we have all experienced the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So maybe, ew, makes a little more sense in their setting. In Hebrew, the understanding of the phrase fresh and blood, it doesn't just represent the physical parts of our bodies, it refers to the whole person, the heart, the mind, the spirit, the feelings, the hopes, the dreams, the fears we have, our concerns. It refers to everything. In the wider body of our Christian faith today, our different denominations have different ways of seeing the bread and wine at the table. I grew up in a family where dad was a civil engineer. That's almost like being in the military. <laughs> you move a lot. I lived in four states before I even got out of high school. And my parents, who met at a Presbyterian college, my Lutheran dad and my Community of Christ mom, met at a Presbyterian college. My parents, and I've always been so thankful to them, believed every time we moved that we should find the congregation in the town we moved to that was right for the family, not just sticking with one denomination. So I was baptized as a Lutheran, and then I spent part of my growing up years as a Presbyterian, and then part of my growing up years in the Congregational Church, and part of my growing up years in the Episcopal Church. And then guess what? I went to that same Presbyterian college that my dad did. <laughs> It wasn't until after I had served many, many denominations as a church musician over the years that I came back home to the Lutheran Church. God was calling me. I didn't know. And in all those different congregations, there was a totally different understanding of this communion. In many of those denominations that I was involved in, it was all symbolic. The body and blood of Christ, symbolic. But in the Lutheran and in the Episcopalian, and obviously in the Roman Catholic as well, this is the true body and blood of Christ. That is our understanding. But it really doesn't matter because at the table here, we are truly in the presence of Christ, sharing in his whole person. Look at verse 56. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. So, we aren't just next to Christ here. We are in a relationship with Christ that is deeper and more connected 
than we ever can fully understand. It's not so much knowledge to be explained and understood as it is a relationship to be trusted and embraced. Jesus no longer speaks of belief in, as the gospel talks about earlier, but of the one who abides in him and he abides in them. Eternal life doesn't just come through understanding correctly or believing in the right things. Eternal life is being in close communion and relationship with Jesus. Eternal life is to remain in Jesus and to have Jesus remain in us. We take Christ's body and blood into our mouths, into our stomachs, into our bodies, so that Christ remains in us and we remain in Christ. As we eat and drink at this table, Christ moves us ever closer to himself and to the very life of God so close that we are as intimate with Jesus as the Father is with the Son. I know that can be really hard to understand, but understanding isn't really that important. What's important is accepting this gift which God has given us through Christ. So today, when we share this body and blood of Christ, let us come to eat and drink this promise that we are given, this abiding with Jesus. May we be prepared to meet God who meets us exactly where we are. It's not like we have to make a trip. God comes to us. And may we receive the real food of Christ's own body and the real drink of Christ's own blood, that we might have support in living in this so very real and difficult world. In this meal, we have life itself, life in Christ, both now and forever. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have special music today.
Let us share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. before the triune God in prayer. God of wisdom, enlighten your church. Guide theologians, biblical scholars, authors, and seminary professors as they seek greater knowledge and invite others into deeper understanding. Teach us to ask faithful questions and open our minds to new ideas. Lord, in your mercy, God of creation, mend the earth, cool warming oceans and preserve melting ice caps. Increase our awareness of changing climate patterns and reveal new approaches to the ecological challenges we face. Shield those in the path of hurricanes or tropical storms. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters so they may come to know new life through you. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all nations, direct our leaders. Grant them courage to lay aside political grudges and renew their determination to address difficult conflicts. Guide them in the work of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, tend to the wounded. Rescue those tormented by mental illness or mired in addiction. Ease the anxiety of those struggling with dementia. Come quickly to help all who are grieving and all those who suffer, especially for those we name before you now in our hearts or spoken out loud. Lord, in your mercy. God of beauty, inspire artists. Bless those whose visual and musical gifts enliven this assembly your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran. Bless the creative work of poets, hymn writers, composers, painters, sculptors, and others that enrich our worship and daily life. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abundant grace. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You may share the peace by bowing to each other. <laughs> The offering plate is at the back of the church. If you haven't already put your offering in there, you may do so. There's three of them total. You may do so on your way out of worship. We give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including the care of those in need. For those worshiping inside the sanctuary, as I said, we receive the offerings in the plates located at the back. Let us pray. 
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, and the whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come eat Christ's love. You may be seated. We celebrate Holy Communion today. Christ's banquet, a gift of Christ's presence, a gift of forgiveness a gift of life for you. You received the prepackaged sealed grape juice with a sealed wafer as you entered the sanctuary. When I say the body of Christ given for you, you may open the wafer and eat it. And then when I say the blood of Christ shed for you, you may open the grape juice and drink. And you may bless those in your family who don't take communion with the words, you are a beloved child of God.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Our sending hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine, number 671. <laughs> Love. 
Filled with Christ's love, we will share Christ's love.